This is not a drill. All right, ladies in South Carolina, especially ladies of color in South Carolina, please watch what this lady is saying. It's just good advice. Hang in there, ladies. Hang in there. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. And it, it's bothering them. It's bothering them. We're, but we're doing it. Come on. Y'all stay safe. Hang in there. Hang in there. I'm so proud of us. Hang in there. Last night, a deputy told family that local white supremacist KKK members originating out of Lexington, North Carolina, are planning to attack from now until Inauguration Day. They are plotting against black people, especially black women, because in their eyes, we are easy targets. Please be vigilant. Try not to do anything alone, especially after dark. This is not a hoax or a rumor. The deputy showed paperwork that the police department has. In their words, they're taking their country back. It's really scary, and please take what I am telling you seriously. We have to continue to live, but just be careful and watch your surroundings. This is not a drill. Please be vigilant. Don't go anywhere alone. Don't go out after dark. Be aware of your surroundings. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem Racha Hakwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you elders, brethren, shalom to you sincere sisters, and shalom to the elect. So anyway, this video is by the brother Abar Yahawada, um, number seven is the screen channel, Abar Yahawada, um, and it has the um, tic-tac-toe sign, or I forgot what you call that sign. I, I think it's pound sign or hashtag, um, whatever they call it. But that's a screen channel. So anyway, I want to do a response off of his video. I uh, saw a lot of it, but you know how it is. We jump on it, and we want to add our two cents, which all adds up at the end of the day. So anyway, um, you notice what I noticed with this woman um, who told all women to beware and be you know be vigilant you notice that she didn't say have your husbands protect you and if you have a man around you have them there for you that's the proudness of Babylon now the scriptures I'm going to go into all resembles in the time of Babylon with prophet Jeremiah right so that's what I noticed you know um, that's what she said well ladies be vigilant and watch out you know and you got to know that these supremacists is in the police department they're in the fire departments a lot of you you know a lot of you people and i'll say some of you brothers and sisters that are younger you haven't even really truly experienced racism as someone who a little bit older you know my wife said they burnt crosses in her backyard right i slept in buildings with triple k spray painted on it when i was living in group homes and watched them burn crosses my son's mother she from out she's from alabama and she seen lynchings and this is in our lifetime right so you people that think this is a joke right it's not a joke that same spirit is being manifested and the younger brothers right who hasn't seen it they're back reincarnated so they know it they've seen it but they don't they haven't seen it in his life so that's why they believe it right and you believe what the scriptures say a lot of people have seen it old jakes old women they older women they've seen it but they don't do anything and they think this situation 
with this president, uh, Madam President, I think they were showing all this in movies before, right? So we, I kind of knew 15 years ago that this was coming down the line. It's always in the movies. Who's married to this person you see in the screen? <laughs> well, there you go. I'm not going to say what she is or what I think she is. The bottom line is this is all set up, right? And the country is going to be mad. And these particular people that run this thing, they're setting the stage. They know what's going down, man. There's nothing left for Babylon. That's why in Jeremiah, I didn't even get that one. In 51, I think, we would have healed Babylon, but she cannot be healed. Let's go to Jeremiah 4. I think this brother brought this out, obviously. This is a go-to scripture. Jeremiah 4 and 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, Though thou rentest thy face with paintings, in vain thou uh, thou makest thyself fair, thy lovers will despise thee and will seek thy life. And the brother was bringing that out. All of you into that uh, other nationality thing, guess what's going That's all going to turn. Eve is so proud, right? Eve is so proud. I, I, I think I put the, I don't know, I took a picture uh, with them voting and all I've seen uh, Eve walk in droves to the voting machine what do you think that's going to do <laughs> think about it the weaker vessel what do you think that's supposed to do for you you're not protected and you would think that they would have something in their minds that say eh, something just ain't right now the ability of our nature has been taken away you know, the scripture says if a, a woman maintain her house, she's full of prudent and much reproach. How's that working out for y'all, man? You Eves, the black so-called black woman, how's that working out for you? The white woman still managed to try to keep her husband even through her feminism, but how's that working out for you? You got the lashes, you got the spandies, your head is up high. I see it when I go uh, to the gym or to the mall or to the store. They all like that. And they just think they the, they the truth. And if this woman get in office, they really going to think they the truth. We'll see how this works out. We see what happened to Egypt. Cleopatra the seventh, who had her twin brother, they set her up. <laughs> Remember, Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says no new thing under the sun, right? Anyway, for I have heard the voice of a woman in travail, of a woman in travail, and in anguish, as of her that bringeth forth her first child. That's pain, suffering. Remember, women women are spoils of war. And these other, I think they just made a president of, of Mexico a woman. And for whatever reason, they're saying is, uh, they have a problem with us as Israelites saying, we're this cult that racists and blacks and women against these different people. But you can see the total opposite happen. If it ain't about race, if it ain't about sexism, why are they making it that way? And because they're forcing it down your throat and they got Barack Obama telling you if you're a black man and you don't vote, then you're scared. So now they're forcing it and the very thing they say that we're doing, that's exactly what they're doing. Anyway, let's go here to <clears throat> Jeremiah. Jeremiah was known as a prophet from the 13th year of Josiah, king of Judah, 626 B.C., until after the fall of Jerusalem, right? If I believe it, this Josiah, um, when halted a prophetess, I believe it was Josiah's, you know, I could be wrong, Salakia, sometimes it slips of the tongue on the history, but uh, halted a prophetess uh, came to him and told him uh, that um, Israel be, would be, uh, uh, Judah would be trodden down. Because they found the temple of the Lord, I mean, and rebuilt the temple, but they, they no no um, no hell would come on him, but the generation after him, and so that was the shameful part. And everybody will say, well, "Hold it, a prophet to see that was a woman, right?" Just like Deborah told a Barak, "Get up and fight," kind of like a help me Genesis two and eighteen. There was nobody else. Israel was broken. So whenever the Lord uses a woman to do something. In a man's position, it's shameful. Why can't they lead just like a man? Get out there and fight with the sword. 
She told Barack, get up and fight. She didn't stand up and fight. Yeah, but you feminists, that's what you do. They talk about Esther. See, Esther, she's the grandchildren, grandparent of, grandma of all the nations. Of, okay. But what did Naomi do? When she had the baby, Naomi took that child and they named the child. She was just a surrogate. Blessings to her for that, I guess. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets that had been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and evil and of pestilence. Right? Yeah. This is why we are here teaching. Not Pastor Jamal Bryant. <laughs> you people, man. But the Lord blinded you. When, when this thing starts coming to pass and it shows itself, you'll see. You'll see. And it's, un it's unbelievable how proud Eve is to this day. And I'd imagine that you're going to see a lot of troubles. As 2 Timothy 3 says, it, in the last days parable times shall come. Men shall be lovers of themselves. This includes women. Right? <laughs> It's men, but you know you can add women to it too. They'll be, uh, um, they'll be proud boasters, you know. Disobedient to their husbands, it's going to get real out here, man. What did what did what did Yahweh say? I'm just quoting Matthew 10 and 35. I come to separate families. You wait till Eve hit. Look, Eve done already broke you, Jake. All of us. Eve has done a number on the children of Israel from the little boys growing up to grown ass men. You already did a number on us. Now, uh, Barack Obama says take the face of this woman as the leader, right? Who you see she's husband uh, uh, married to. And then we as so-called black men and Hispanics and whoever else, Israelites, we are supposed to look up to that, which is totally against the scriptures. And maybe she may be a tear. I don't know. But it's still. It's still totally against the scripture. Just in the general sequence of it. And it's showing you the downfall. Of how the elites. Have to put somebody like that up. <laughs> That's not good. It's kind of like throwing the last haymaker. Jeremiah 31 and 22. I'm standing in Jeremiah. How long will thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? This with the brother read too. For the Lord have created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. I believe that's the first scripture he read. So yeah, I just wanted to give my uh, take on it. And um, you can clearly see how there, this woman, even a white woman, she they believe they made a milestone. Yeah, what I say is, let them all run it, right? If you're greater than men, then let them bring in the trucks. Let them deliver the food. Let them pick up the trash. Let them build the buildings that they're in, right? And do all the plumbing and electricity, right? Let them do all that stuff themselves. Not doubting that some of them, the big burly ones can probably handle it for a month or so. But let them do it. If that's what they think, that they want to switch places, which they won't switch with me or none of the men of the Lord, uh, but I'm just saying in society, switch places, right, and let them do everything. See, it's kind of sick that you want to call for equality, but you want to do everything the man does, but then now the man is home, right, uh, babysitting the children. <laughs> now he's the mother, but when it still comes to the manly things, he is now still have to sped up to do the manly things that you want him to do as a man, although you're carrying on the role as a man. How does that make sense? You're playing the role of a man, but you don't want to do anything the man does. But you want your husband to do it. But you still want him to be a mother. And this is why you call it the queen of heaven. And this is why you call it a broken people. Right? We're going to go to Jeremiah 44. Jeremiah 44. 
It's called the stubbornness of our people, of the Israelites. Where are we at? There's also a top one called Judgment on the Jews of the Jews in Egypt. Oh, okay. The Jews in Egypt. That's a good one when we go into the strangers, Leviticus 19.34. And, uh, and what Paul said in Acts 13, you were strangers in the land of Egypt. But anyway, um, Jeremiah 44. Then all the men who knew that their wives were burning incense unto other gods, and all the women standing by in great assembly along with all the people living in the land of Egypt and Pathros said to Jeremiah, As for the word you have spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. Instead, we will do everything to vow to uh, we vow to do. We will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and offer drink offerings to her. That's exactly what's happening now. You'll see some men, they'll roll down there and they'll they understand that it hasn't been doing well for them because we are broken people. The way was we were raised, they can't see the root cause of the problem. So they figure, join to the queen of heaven, which the woman worshiped the queen of heaven, right? And this soon to be elect, right, is set up to bring them to the queen of heaven. This is nothing new under the sun, right? It says, um, we will not listen to you. Instead, we will do everything vowed, vowed to do. We will burn incense to the queen of heaven and offer a drink offering to her. Just as we, our fathers, our kings, and our officials did in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. It's hard to believe, which we, a great millstone, believe in reincarnation. It's hard to believe that these people, they lived these lives. It was easy to believe. But they died and they came back doing the same thing. And it's been manifested in the end. Right? It's manifested in the end that they're doing the same damn thing that they did in their past lives. Anyway. Um, we will burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and offer drink offerings to her. Just as we are fathers, kings, officials, cities of Judah. Judah. At this time, we had plenty of food uh, and good things, and we saw no disaster. But from the time we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured our drink offers to her, right, we have lacked everything and have been perishing by the sword and famine. And that's exactly what's happening today. A lot of people, they're trying to come back, you know, and, and get uh, put on feminine vibration effeminate vibration and come up under the woman you'll hear a lot of guys say yeah but I, when I got with my woman man she saved me man she she saved my life and got me all together not that the Lord can't use a woman to help you right but you these people have gotten away from the glory of the Heavenly Father and even in these churches they're focusing more more on Deborah right and uh, Esther and uh Holder more than Yahawasha, the one you call Jesus, or or David, you know, or uh, Peter, and the the twelve and the disciples and Paul. That's the people today. So anyway, um, do I feel sorry for them? No. You heard this woman at the beginning. What did she say? She said, um, hang in there, hang in there. You know where that term come from? <laughs> yeah, listen to the word. But she's telling, it's always the, the, the white woman telling the black woman to do certain things. And the black woman is the one that always follow the white woman into it, just like the uh, feminism. Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger and various other white women, right, were pushing burning bras and pushing it on the black woman to be feminist and to be strong and because we were so oppressed and the women felt like they wasn't getting help from us instead of sticking with us they turned from us and they traded in their men for jobs and housing and benefits but meanwhile these white women it came out 
would sleep with the husbands, right, of, of the women that was kicking out their husbands. Yeah. And this is what you see. Anyway, uh, that's all I have on that. Shalom.